we're just all so blessed to have an amazing life and it's our responsibility to lean into that as much as possible. Oh, get excited, girl. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> the season for Overland Expo in 2022 is going back to normal. The West event kicks it off in May, May 20th through 22nd in Flagstaff, Arizona. And then July 8th through 10th, we're at the Pacific Northwest, just north of Bend in Oregon. August 26th through the 28th, we are in Loveland, Colorado for Mountain West. And then we wrap up the season October 7th through 9th in Arrington, Virginia with the East Show. listening to the GHT Overland Podcast. It's 2022. Wowza, wowza, hot dang. So we've been thinking about how to tackle 2022, bringing new fun energy to the podcast. Of course, our go-to style leans on the serious, more thoughtful side. But really, that gets boring pretty quick. I think we all should have a little more fun and not take ourselves so seriously. But obviously, speaking for myself. (laughs) In any case... Here's to a better, more fun energy as we tackle a new life and soak in all our surroundings and experiences. You are awesome, and we appreciate you being part of the crew. Let's blaze new trails, throwing up dust and mud as we tackle new adventures together. Be sure and tag us on the social medias so we can see what kind of awesomeness you're up to. Do you know how people do that, Lisa? Hashtag GHT Overland. Hashtag GHT Overland. (laughs) You're so smart. The GHT Overland podcast is all about learning together from other experienced Overland travelers and adventure enthusiasts, sharing in laughter and motivation from their stories, experiences, and insights. This episode is brought to you by GHT Overland. Please keep in mind... We'd love your support. Keeping all the algorithm spirits happy is kind of necessary. So if you would, at a minimum, level one love is take a second to leave a rating on iTunes or the podcast platform you listen on. Anything from a short little I like it to whatever you're feeling. Without constant love from you, we're just sludge at the bottom of a lost cold coffee cup. Level two love is found on ghtoverland.com. This is where we maintain a list of recommended apps, books, and gear. Thank you to everyone who has used these links. This also helps us earn a commission, costing you nothing extra. Level 3 Love is on Patreon. This is your opportunity to support the GHT Overland podcast with monthly little thank yous that help us pay web hosting fees, podcast hosting, and all the things that keep the podcast growing and improving. This is also how you get your hands on some sweet swag. GHT stands for gratitude, humility, and tenacity. These are our three primary pillars of life. Taking it to the next level, we're adding in the rest of our pillars. With love at the core, purpose is our foundation, and no matter the obstacle or challenge, we always continue to move forward. So if you were... Or we're not wondering, this is the mysterious little logo you sometimes see on a post, in a video, and tattoos. Thank you for joining us as we pursue a renewed life mission of putting the best in people and nature on display, while tackling the ugly Goliath of today 
by consistently placing positivity and respect for others in front of everything else. You know, it consistently amazes me how much we learn from each guest and how much they all inspire us. This week's guest exudes positive energy and awesomeness. She is the interview that I've not stopped thinking about for the last few weeks. Her energy was just that good. Over Christmas, over New Year's, it's what got me thinking, why be so damn serious all the time? Lighten up, have fun, be you. After taking a couple weeks off, we've all but finished a kitchen remodel, took delivery of our new truck, and changed gears at least eight times on our habitat vessel. After getting notice of our previously ordered trailer, mind you, we ordered in April of 2021 that it was a three to six month delay with several price increases, despite the pre-order contract. It looks like it was not meant to be, and we just made the wrong choices last April. Isn't it funny how the chips fall and sort themselves out? Manufacturers had better step up and listen Although you face immense challenges and shortages, pushing out junk products and sellers boosting prices based on demand, consumers will remember this and how you treated them when all this blows over and you need to actually earn a customer's business again. We are beyond excited for our change and believe there are still a few manufacturers, mostly small family-run businesses, who have strong values and do what they do because of their love for their craft. We will be shouting from the rooftops once everything is finalized. It's going to be amazing and hopefully something that will bring ideas and renewed inspiration to you. So I will get off my soapbox and back (laughs) on track for today's guest. As you heard, we're talking Overland Expo this episode with Eva Rupert. Although Eva is the Moto Community Ambassador for Overland Expo, it's clear Eva is a lot more. From cooking dinner and whipping up cocktails for everyone who shares her campfire, Eva is a skilled outdoors woman with a diverse background, including a degree in film production and a resume ranging from experiential education to restaurant management. Eva loves exploring on two wheels, and meets the world with boundless enthusiasm, curiosity, and optimism, as you are about to enjoy. Let's get into it. We hope you have an amazing week. Welcome to the podcast and thank you for taking the time to join us. Oh, you guys, I'm so thrilled to be here. This is really fun and I'm so looking forward to talking to you both. Yeah, it's super cool. So thank you. So Eva, with the amount of travel and adventure you do, where do you call home? Oh, that's always a really good question, Chris. Well, so I make my home most of the time in a little town called Bisbee, Arizona. It is very far southern Arizona, about 10 miles from the Mexico border. And my partner, Sterling Noreen, and I own a vintage motel down here. And so that is home. We live on the property and we have seven rooms uh, for our guests, we've got motorcycle parking in the front and overland vehicle parking in the back. So it's a great place. Well, I love that you put the motorcycle parking up front. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'm an adventure motorcyclist first and foremost. So of course, motos get the front parking spot. <laughs> That's sweet. You got to have your priorities. Totally. Plus, most of the rigs that people travel in wouldn't fit in our front parking lot. So <laughs> we have to have a oh, big backyard then there's for that. them. <laughs> then there's that. Okay. Gotcha. So how or what inspired what appears to be an unquenchable thirst for adventure for you? Oh, gosh, that's such a good question. I, um, I've, I've always been a traveler. I've always been a wanderer ever since I was young. You know, I was road tripping as soon as I had a driver's license. And I, I would say that it all started because of my love for the outdoors. So whether I was hiking or rock climbing or just 
out exploring the wilderness. I, I feel like my my passion for being outdoors in the backcountry, in the wild places, is the thing that inspires me to get behind the handlebars of the motorcycle or behind the steering wheel of the truck and, and hit the road. And if you're on the road on an overland trip, what does your average daily routine look like? Hmm. Well, I do most of my travel by motorcycle. I, I do have a Tacoma and Sterling and I have a really fabulous Quigley 4x4 van that we travel in. But most of my overlanding happens via motorcycle. So, you know, the, the daily routine is get up, break camp, ride, wash, rinse, repeat the next day. So I wouldn't say that I have a hard and fast routine because it, I feel like... You know, adventure riding always has so many variables. And unlike truck travel, you're far more subject to the element, elements um, than you are in your vehicle because it you, you were just out there and you were fully exposed. So, you know, the mornings always involve making coffee first and foremost. Nothing happens before Very coffee good. in my world. Respect. And, <laughs> yeah. And you know, typically I'll have a general sense of the direction that I'm headed or the roads that I want to ride or where I want to be at the end of the day. And I kind of make my way in that direction, but I always try and give myself enough leeway that if a side road piques my interest or a detour in town comes up, that that I have a latitude to, to explore and be as freewheeling as possible in my adventures. No oh, fun. That's super cool. Okay, cool. So, Eva, in doing our homework for your interview today, your spirit for adventure with what appears to be a glowing high-energy personality seems pretty obvious. You're currently an ambassador of adventure with Overland Expo, so that's got to be a pretty cool gig. That's my, my unofficial official title. <laughs> How long have you been doing that? Um, so I've been working with Overland Expo for the last five, maybe coming up on six years now, which is awesome. So I've seen the event series itself through di two different ownership organizations, which has been wonderful. And I started out on the food and beverage side of Overland Expo um, oh, cool. years ago, Overland Expo West, which is, you know, the granddaddy of Overland Expos in Flagstaff, Arizona, yeah. moved from the venue at Mormon Lake to Fort Tuthill County Park. And when that transition happened, Roseanne and Jonathan Hansen approached me and asked if I would help back them up on some of the food and beverage side of things, because that venue is a blank slate. And we create that entire event from scratch on, you know, basically without any venue support. And so I came in on the food and beverage side of things, which was all about creating a really groovy food scene and cocktail scene for everybody who attended the event. And that was the start of it and did that for several years. And then when Lindsay and Jessica and the Lodestone team came in to take over, they sort of pushed me towards more of the motorcycle side of things and sort of just being this ambassador for adventure for the show in general. Um, you know, I, I live and breathe overlanding in so many ways and spend so much time outdoors. It was just a natural fit. So these days I do a lot of hosting and a lot of great podcasts with wonderful people. Um, and just really be an ambassador for the show itself. And, you know, really, I, I feel like I have the best job out of anybody at Overland Expo. I mean, my job is to <laughs> nice. hang out with all the best people and have all the fun trips. And I do a lot of content creation on the editorial side of things. So lots of writing. Oh, cool. And I just joined the social media team. So you'll see my hand in some more fun stuff on Instagram through Overland Expo. And I, it, it's really it's really just a wonderful fit for, for who I am and how I live my life. So it's, a, it's just a seamless relationship. I love it. Okay, cool. You're clearly fueled by adventure. You're a survivalist. You've been on Discoveries Naked and Afraid twice, spending 21 days in Madagascar and 40 days in Colombia. And you do event planning in a style that looks pretty cool. What inspired your sense of adventure and survival? Oh, well, if we're talking about Naked and Afraid, we can't spend, forget to mention the two weeks that I spent in the Bahamas on Naked and Afraid with sharks because I've oh. actually done Naked and Afraid three times. So if I wasn't nice. already doubly, doubly crazy for doing it 
21 days and 40 days, I had to get in the water naked with a bunch of sharks too. So, um, missed that one. No, it's okay. It's okay. Talk about shark week. It was a shark week special. It was, it was something else (laughs) from my earliest adventures. I've always been interested in how people do things when we don't have our Gore-Tex and our silicone impregnated tarps and our like high fill down sleeping bags. And like somehow humans got to where we are right now with a whole lot less stuff. And so that's kind of always spurred this inquiry for me. And I, I think it's kind of why I love motorcycling so much because it's so raw and it's so pure. And I believe that humans are designed inherently to survive. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here today. We probably would have gotten eaten by T-Rexes or something, right? So, like, we have this this spirit of survival and this spirit of adventure inside of all of us. And so, the survival side of things just kind of came naturally to me because I just wanted to know more. I wanted to be closer to the earth, closer to the wilderness, deeper into the backcountry with less and less resources. And, and, the, and the more you practice true wilderness survival and the more you learn these primitive skills i i feel like the more connected i am to the natural world and so that's really kind of what led led me down that path and then naked and afraid came out of the blue and it's something that um, you know people ask about it all the time but it's something that i you know did in the past and i'm glad i did it but it's you know people see the reruns on tv and feel like it's happening today and <laughs> it's just it's just one of those crazy things that goes on my resume and i'm so glad it's been a part of my life that's really impressive that somebody has done that not twice but three times <laughs> three with three sharks. times that's crazy <laughs> It's crazy. Well, I bet it was a really entertaining or awesome experience in some way. So good for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great experience. It's so, it's so cool. It's so raw. And so, yeah, it's, it's so much more powerful than the version people watch on television. So, but that's probably another conversation altogether. (laughs) (laughs) So in reading an old blog post of yours, you wrote, I put more value on my life when I'm in transit rather than living in one place. When you wake up to a different skyline every couple of days, the words flow like wine. What is it about mm. being on the road that gives more life value for you? Oh man, I love that I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a couple of years ago. Yeah, wow, you know. We did some digging. I. I, I, that is awesome. And, you know, it makes me feel like I've been thinking about relaunching my own personal blog because I used to be an avid blogger. And, you know, I just feel like there's something about when you wake up in the morning and the day is fresh and new, it sort of relieves some of the the burden of knowing what to expect, right? You get to be in that wide-eyed beginner's mind kind of place where all you have is is the resources on your back and the things in front of you right and the entire world just feels fresh and new and inspiring and you know that's where great writing and great art comes from but it's also where great adventuring comes from you know when you wake up and you know you're about to launch into the unknown and when you're like you know when your toes are at the edge of that cliff and you know you're about to jump into some beautiful freezing lake like that is pure inspiration right there and it's pure potential and i think that's one of the places where we can truly live our best lives And so I think it's our responsibility to find that as much as possible, you know, and some people I'm sure do it in their teaching jobs and their accounting jobs. And, you know, those of us on this side of things, we do it through travel. And yeah, I, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what to do with myself if I didn't have a a driver's license and a motorcycle and a, and a spirit of adventure. Oh, that's awesome. So if you're going on an overland trip, like on average, what does your packing list look like? Oh, well, you know, when you're a motorcyclist, you're very limited for space. You know, every time we take a van trip, I get really excited because I just bring all the things. You know, <laughs> I bring all the warm blankets and I bring all the clothes and I bring all the food and I stock the Dometic full of fresh stuff. But motorcycling is is an exercise in minimalism, right? It's this very Spartan way of doing things. Even if you're riding a fully loaded, big adventure motorcycle, the amount of stuff that you can bring compared to a truck trip is totally different. So, you know, I always bring enough stuff to stay warm 
all year round, I bring a zero degree sleeping bag. I don't care if it's the middle of the summer in the desert and I'm on a ride. I bring my zero bag with me. That comes everywhere with me. Um, for motorcycling, I'm, I'm also really committed to my Thermarest Z-Rest closed cell foam pad because I've camped so often with people on these big puffy sleeping pads and they're always deflating in the middle of the night. And for me, to, I can sleep on a little piece of foam and it's never going to let me down. So those are two essential parts of my kit along with a small tarp that I can lay down as a ground sheet if it's a beautiful night or I can string it up as a shelter if it's going to be inclement weather. So that's sort of my my base sleeping kit. I always have um, some good cooking stuff with me. You know, if I'm motorcycling, I'll bring a little pocket stove. Sometimes I'll bring the jet boil. There's always coffee. There's always cooking oil and some spices. There's usually a little flask of some good bourbon for the evenings or something to make up a yummy cocktail. Um, Lots of water carrying as much as I possibly can particularly because I live in Southern Arizona. So we don't necessarily have the water sources that you can pick up along the way. So you tend to have to carry your water and have a pretty substantial amount to get through some hot desert days. Um, My clothing kit is relatively minimal, but I always bring long underwear. I always wear wool socks, you know, a couple changes of underwear and t-shirts if it's going to be a longer trip. And yeah, and then always tools. You know, I on a motorcycle, it's pretty easy to make a relatively minimal tool kit. And I always say that with my tool kit, I can't fully rebuild an engine, but I can get darn close. So I bring everything that I can and the knowledge to use it all, which is what's most important. Ooh, good point. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we have no experience with um, doing overland travel on a bike. Like, I'm just curious, food wise. How much do you take a lot of dry food with you, like freeze dried food, or like what's the secret? Yeah, I do not do the freeze dried food thing. I am too much of a foodie to just throw a bunch of dehydrated, weird (laughs) stuff that I pour boiling water into. You can pack light and bring foods that are delicious and more nutritious than those strange bags that you just rehydrate. That said, I know there's some really yummy ones out there, and I've had a few samples sent to me. And I know there's some good stuff and it is an area I should expand into more because it might be a good space saver. Um, But, you know, the thing with motorcycling is you, you know, you don't have the range, even if you're carrying a lot of accessory fuel with you, you pretty much have to go to a gas station once or twice a day, right? And so oh, I have this gotcha. whole okay. series of of cooking and recipes that's called Gas Station Gourmet. And so, you know, whether it's a, you know, Circle K charcuterie board or it's, you know, my one of my signature dishes is Spam Sushi. So it's like... I tend to try and get really creative and bring stuff that's going to feel wonderful and satisfying. You know, I do a bunch of sort of Asian inspired dishes because you can easily pack curries and you can easily pack, you know, powdered ginger and cumin and coriander and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, You know, you can throw a lime or two in your bag and that just adds so much brightness and flavor to anything. A lot of dried rice noodles, peanut butter powder. Um, I tend to pick up a lot of canned meats, like I use canned chicken on a regular basis because it's just a great protein source and easy to pack. Um, Gosh, I mean, it just runs the whole gamut. It it all depends. I'm not a big breakfast person, so I think that spares me a little bit. And I always, I do not skimp on pricing when it comes to different sorts of power bar type foods, right? Like I love like, I will spend $4 on, on a really great high quality nutrient dense energy bar to carry with me through the day. So yeah, so I keep those in the tank bag and lots of water and then just get creative with what you can pick up along the road, you know, especially At the end of the day, if you hit a gas station and it happens to have like a little fridge section, you can get cheese and a lot of times you can get baby carrots and lunch meat and all that sort of stuff to supplement whatever sort of dried foods you're bringing with you. Okay. And then what's one piece of gear you always make sure and take with you? Ooh. Um, I mean, from a survival standpoint, I always bring a knife with me. Like that's, that's the tool to end all tools. Um, you know, like in a horrific survival scenario where your motorcycle went down the cliff one way and you went down the cliff the other way, I feel like you're better off having a really rock solid knife with you than anything else. But gosh, there's gotta be some piece of gear 
Hmm. Oh, you know what I always bring? I always bring a big giant scarf with me. Um, something thin, something lightweight, something I can wrap around my neck and head a bunch of times if it's chilly at night, or if for some reason I'm, you know, on a ferry to Baja and I want some privacy, I can wrap myself up in the thing. I can use it as a shade shelter in the desert in the summertime. So a big scarf that's, you know, I have a couple of them. They're about six feet long and four feet wide and they're just useful, handy, do all kinds of things. That's a big scarf. Everything's so versatile. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you look back on and laugh that you used to take with you? Oh, gosh. Um, that I used to take with me. Jeez, that's a good question. I don't really feel like my kit has changed much over time. Maybe, I mean, maybe I would laugh at myself for trying to bring a warmer weather sleeping bag, but that always got me in trouble. And so (laughs) that's probably one of the only major changes in my system over time is that I always have something to keep me warm, even, (laughs) even though I live in the desert now. So, gosh, I don't know. That's a that's a great question. I'm probably going to cook on this, and then in the middle of the night, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be like <laughs> earmuffs. I always. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know if I have anything brilliant on that front. I think I'm with you on the sleeping bag. I spent way too many nights being hypothermic. I think I carry a minus thirty degree bag no matter what I do where I go. I would totally. much rather be hot and sleep on top of it than to be cold. Yes. Agreed, 100%. <laughs> oh, bad memories. Okay, so what's the first thing that comes to mind regarding the outdoor adventures you've had as to the number one biggest challenge or maybe scariest moment that you faced? Mm, the biggest challenge or the scariest moment. I like to think that I don't spend much of my time in a place of fear, but rather in a place of challenge. I have definitely gotten myself in over my head with not enough water, but that's more on survival trips. I feel like, gosh, the scariest. Well, I did have like a whole team of skunks invade my campsite, and that was really scary because they Um, were just, you know, (laughs) they're half blind and they stink. And I had a whole little gang of them, four or five of them. And I must have poured some pasta water out too close to camp. And they're adorable. I mean, skunks are the cutest things, but you do not want to get sprayed by skunks when you're out for weeks at a time because you're never going to get that stench out and it's going to burn your eyes. And so I had a whole little posse of them. This was actually just a few months ago. It was (laughs) really silly. And I must have like camped in their zone. And it was just, it was the funniest thing because they were just parading through my campsite as if they owned the place, like ruffling around half blind, (laughs) wondering where the food was. And I, they just put me on edge because I just did not want to get sprayed. But I also didn't want to uproot my cozy little camp just because there was a bunch of skunks around. <laughs> so, Sounds fair to um, me. I yeah, visualized them yeah. just like all marching in a little line going right through they, past you. <laughs> they totally were. They totally were. They, they were. they just wanted to let me know that I was on their turf and they were just looking for little nuggets of food. <laughs> I was in their way and I did not want to get sprayed. But, you know, the the fear thing, I think, gets mitigated from experience. You know, I've, you know, knock on wood, I, I haven't had any serious backcountry injuries or serious scares or breakdowns that I haven't been able to deal with on my own or with the help of others. So I, I guess on that sense, I feel like I've been really fortunate and really lucky. But I also feel like that comes from a lifetime of preparing for those kinds of inevitable challenges, right? And I'm not saying I'm the best motorcycle mechanic in the world or the best backcountry first aid person in the world, but to have a diversity of experience and to have a lot of experience in different terrains and different environments, I think really helps offset some of those potential mistakes and potential issues, you know, that can arise. And it comes back to the training thing, right? You can carry all the tools in the world, but if you don't know how to use them, it's it's not going to do you any good. And it's just going to be a lead weight in your pack. So, you know, 
it, it, it comes down to, to experience and really leaning into the learning side of, of the Overland space. Uh, with the diverse experience you've had and places you've been, what are one or two that still stick with you today as absolute highlights? Oh, well, I live in a place that I consider an absolute highlight. Southern Arizona is easily one of my favorite places in the entire world. And, you know, I've lived all across the country. I've lived in nine different states, probably 25 different towns and cities. And I live in this tiny town that's very remote. And Southern Arizona is so largely unexplored and has so much wildness to it that it's it's easily I mean I I live in one of my my dream places right now which which is wonderful um and I also I'm gearing up for a trip to Baja again this winter and I would say that Baja is absolutely I love all of Mexico of course um but but Baja is such a special gem of a place and it has that same sort of wildness and that same desert environment that I love so much and then it has oceans on all sides which I think is just the most magical thing so those those would be the top two but I mean you know, you name a place. I lived in Colorado for years and I love the high passes of Colorado. I love the Pacific Northwest. I, you know, I love Northern New England. I, there's just so many great places. I can't really narrow it down. What's the best time of year to visit Southern Arizona? Well, it, you know, it's, um, it's, it's hot. So <laughs> the summer the summer is probably not the best time, but the rest of the year is phenomenal. You know, I'd probably avoid June, July, August, but you know, where I live, I live at 5,500 feet, right? So oh, it wow, might be okay. 120 down in the valley, but in this little town of Bisbee, it's, you know, 90 and gorgeous. Um, so I'd probably avoid like the thick of summertime here if you're visiting, um, but Arizona has so much diversity to it. You know, you, you think of Arizona as just like a sand dune with a cactus sticking out of the middle. But really, like Arizona has so many different climates. And, you know, over the course of the day, like you can be at close to 9,000 feet and then you can be at, you know, 1,000 feet over the course of one day of riding. So it's um, it's it's such a diverse place. You kind of have to be prepared for everything but you know winters can get cold in the high country but they're great in the lowlands um spring and fall is obviously wonderful we have an amazing monsoon season which you always kind of have to take into account with your route planning and you know if you're here during monsoon season of course you have to worry about flash floods in any sort of canyon type areas and you know it's it's just one of those places where you can come anytime come in the summer i mean why not like <laughs> travel by night it's like you know being a desert oh, nomad is wonderful that sounds super cool so speaking of experience let's roll into overland expo you have four locations i think this is the most you've ever had right this year in 2022 yeah, this is new. This is super exciting. So we added a Colorado show this year, 2021, and we are adding a Pacific Northwest show in Oregon, just north of Ooh. Bend for 2022. So that gives us four That's events awesome. and it really serves our our customer base and the adventurers who are part of our community. So, you know, every time we would put out a survey and say, hey, where would you like to see a new Overland Expo? I mean, it was so heavily weighted to the Pacific Northwest that we couldn't say no. And it's such an awesome opportunity for us to be up there and for us to kind of connect with our community in that part of the world because it's phenomenal. So as as you guys know, being from Portland. Yeah, that's going to be super cool. I'm super, super looking forward to that. So tell us, like, can people get tickets now? Like, how do, how do they uh, look into that and reserve a spot before they're all taken? Yeah, so tickets are on sale right now for all of our events. You can just go to overlandexpo.com and all of the events are right there on the landing page. So Perfect. pick the one or pick all four that you want to go to and grab your tickets. You know, we've got a bunch of different ticketing levels for Overland Expo. You can come on a day pass if you live in the area and just want to pop in and see what's going on. You can do a weekend pass with camping 
which is great. And that's one of my favorite parts of Overland Expo is, you know, a large portion of our attendee base camps all weekend. So it makes for this really fun community vibe. Um, the weekend pass with camping lets you come and camp out for the whole weekend and check out all the cool exhibitors and take all the cool classes. And then if you're really all in, you want to sign up for the Overland Experience class because that's where you get the amazing hands-on riding and driving training from our awesome training team. So those are the ones where, you know, you're working with the 7P team to learn hands-on driving skills. You're working with the DART team to learn hands-on adventure riding skills. And you're in the dirt in your vehicle for the whole weekend. So that's the Overland Experience ticket. And it's really cool. So oh, that's going to be a huge winner. So to keep in mind, we have been working like 18 hours a day for the last four years, seven days a week. So we have never been to Overland Expo. We will go this year and we're super stoked about doing it. Um, so we always think of Overland Expo as like big rigs and lots of gear and selling stuff and showing off fancy, shiny things. But it, so it sounds like there's a lot of classes that you can do that would be either in your vehicle, on your motorcycle, but also classes you can sit and learn what, like navigation? What else are they teaching? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think that's the thing that, you know, the shiny object side of Overland Expo is it's very upfront, it's very in your face. But the thing that makes the event what it is, is the learning opportunities and the community side of it. So our classes, you know, obviously we have the hands-on stuff with the Overland Experience ticket, the riding and driving classes. But then even if you're there just on a day pass or a weekend pass, I mean, we've got everything from navigation and first aid to regional specific forums and panels and discussions that might be of special interest to you, whether you're a woman traveling alone or if you're traveling with a family or you know it like oh, cool. the okay. learning goes on and on and on so we post our classes a few weeks before each event and so as those start to roll out they um will be up on our website you can always look at the compass on overland expo which is where we put all of our editorial content um but classes will get released prior to each event and you can sort of just plan your schedule for the weekend and i mean you can do cooking classes and you know very often i'll do like a backcountry cocktailing class um you know first aid health and wellness specific travel tips and techniques from like how to pack to how to travel with fresh food to how you know basic vehicle repairs and pre-ride checklist kind of items. I mean, there's just so much and our instructors are fabulous. You know, we have this whole track that's like overlanding 101. So if you are brand new to the space and maybe in your first truck or vehicle, you can learn all of the basics of how to get yourself going on your adventure. So the the education, I think, is really one of the highlights of Overland Expo. That is super cool. I think our friends, uh, Brittany and Eric with Hourless Life did some training at one of the expos last year. I think it was maybe Overland Expo West. I don't know. We'd have to check in with Yeah, them. I can't remember. I can't remember which one. I think they might have even been at a couple shows. I can't remember. But anyhow, they're fabulous, wonderful people. And, you know, they're part of the community. That's just what happens. You know, you come to Overland Expo once and I just feel like, you know, so many great friendships and so many great connections are made. And, you know, on the education side of things, if there's something that you want to learn or some place that you want to go and you want to learn about that and know about that, somebody at Overland Expo has been there and can give you some insight onto that idea or that concept or that trip that you want to take. So the community is, is, is just stellar and one of the best parts of the show. Okay, super cool. And so for those that are really focused on moto, what can they expect? Anything specific class-wise that's going to be exciting this year that they could look forward to? Oh, well, the moto side of Overland Expo is my favorite part, obviously, because I'm biased. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the hands-on training is really great. Bill Dragu and his team with DART, um, teach a really comprehensive off-road riding course. And so if you just bought your first adventure bike and have never ridden off-road before, you can spend the entire weekend training with those guys and you are going to learn so many incredible, valuable skills just there hands-on. But the motorcycle community 
is really special. It's very close knit. It's really positive. I, I mean, I could say the same thing about the vehicle side of things, but because it's so much smaller than the vehicle side of things, the moto community tends to be really tight knit and really close. And one of the great things about Overland Expo, we do a big moto party that's just for the moto community. And so that always happens on Saturday night and all of us who get together come and, you know, have a great dinner and have some drinks. And there's a big prize raffle that goes on that's a ton of fun. And so that's just a really great way to learn that side of the community. Um, Obviously, all of the great gear and all of the great classes are, are there and available to you as well. So, yeah, we always have a great posse of moto exhibitors to, to buy all the cool stuff. And one of the really fun things is that we always have the OEMs there and you can do a bunch of different demo rides. So this past year in 2021, Harley Davidson was there with their new adventure bike, the Pan America. Yamaha was there with their Tenere 700. There was just all kinds of great adventure motorcycles to try out in case you're in the space to think about buying your first bike or buying a new bike. You can go demo them. Well, that's cool. Wow. And then, so what about the uh, the four wheel vehicle type? What, anything exciting and new coming up this coming year for that? Oh well, you know the vehicle side of things is just so amazing because Overland Expo truly is the premier event for four wheel drive vehicles and adventure travel enthusiasts. Um, I obviously you can deck out your rig, you can buy a brand new rig, you can find all of those little accessories that you need to to finish your build or start your build or inspire your next adventure. But the classes are really phenomenal on the vehicle side of things because there's such a wealth of knowledge from our instructor pool in that space. So whether you're from the Northeast or the Southwest, there's somebody from that area who's teaching a class and can give you a lot of unique regional knowledge. You know, if you're thinking that you want to ship your truck to Africa or start your planning for your round the world adventure, those people are there as well. So I just feel like there's such a wealth of knowledge and there are so many highly trained and highly experienced people for everybody to learn from. So whether you're brand new to overlanding or you've got a lot of miles under your belt, there is somebody wonderful for you to learn from and to connect with at the show. That's super cool. And so any other types of travel that'll be focused on anywhere from, I don't know, bicycles, Vespas to, <laughs> I was a tuk-tuk. I was thinking of a, t- there was somebody that did a, a like a, oh, yeah. did I the like Pan Am and a tuk-tuk or somewhere. I don't know. Yep. Yep. Anything totally. else that you guys are focused totally. on? Um, well, you know, I've been seeing a lot of the e-bikes come into this space and a lot of the smaller motorcycles, right? Because you can easily put a couple of e-bikes on the back of your truck or you can put a couple of little motorcycles on the back of your truck. And so I'm seeing some of the bike packing side of things and then sort of the accessory habits to overlanding come into the space as well, right? Like we all go to these amazing locations and you want to get out there and you want to go for a bike ride or you want to go for some great hiking. And so all of that is kind of infused into the show as well so you know it's kind of like the the food and cooking side of things it's those things that like really enhance your adventure like we're out there to do the ride and to do the drives and to camp in the amazing locations but once we're there we want to get out there and experience it you know when we're in in more urban areas we're there to experience the culture and when we're in deep backcountry, we're there to experience the wilderness and all of that is part of overland expo amen perfect okay now i'm gonna get two tickets for just me <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, I love it. Well, that's kind of our style of doing things as well. It, it's it's doing the adventure and getting there, but then really digging into the backcountry and hiking, whether we do biking or what have you. So that's that's amazing to hear. Yeah. <laughs> so you can send me off to a cooking class. Oh yeah, I'll get you hooked up with a cookie, and I'll just leave for a couple weeks. Oh, well, that's cool. <laughs> Give us a break. <laughs> Is there a reason to go to more than one expo or will each one provide the same level of classes and vendors? Oh, that's a really great question. So there's always, every show feels different. And, you know, this is coming from me and I've been to every Overland Expo for the last six or seven years. I mean, I've been to the West one for eight or maybe even nine years now. Um, But each one is a little bit different, right? You get some of that regional infusion into each event because more of those local 
um, exhibitors and organizations are going to come to those shows. So when you're on the East Coast, that one always has such like a cozy hometown East Coast feel to it to me in Virginia. Um, the West one is really big and you see a lot of the big outfits from Colorado, Arizona, Southern California out there. So that kind of tends to be more of the whiz bang one. Colorado had a wonderful feel this past year. It was sort of a really perfect mix of that cozy down home feel with a really exceptional exhibitor base. And I think we're going to see something very similar in the Pacific Northwest this year. And the best thing about coming to more than one Overland Expo is it gives you a reason to explore an entirely different region, right? If you're like, you know, I spend most of my time in Arizona, I haven't been in Oregon in a long time, you know, make that event weekend the the trip of a lifetime, right? Take the week before or the week after to really lean into that local environment and go explore some of the local trails, get on a backcountry discovery route and, and do some driving, do some riding, just really sink into that location and do some exploring, especially if you're coming from further afield and you're not local to that area. So yeah, come to all of them. We'd love to see you. <laughs> I want to go to all four. <laughs> go to all four. Why not? Come it's to too all much four. time. No. Yeah. We're supposed to be Absolutely. slowing down. Because yeah. I plan on going to a lot. Well, you can go to all four and then I will continue north. Oh, That is perfect. <laughs> do it. We'd love to see you guys at any or all of the shows. No, that look on her face said absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> what else about Overland Expo should folks know or look forward to this coming year? Ooh, well, the Oregon show, the Pacific Northwest show is definitely something to look forward to because that is a new location for us. So that's just going to be new and fun and exciting and fresh. Um, gosh, what should people look forward to? I mean, I, I feel like I want everybody to come for the whole weekend because you just can't see it in a day. You know, people, you can come on a day pass, obviously, but you're really going to get that whole overland experience when you're there for the weekend. You're going to meet people. You're going to camp next to new friends. And the next thing you know, you guys are going to be going on trips together. So I think coming and really experiencing it whole hog is the way to do Overland Expo, in my opinion. I like that. Let's go whole hog. <laughs> whole hog. <laughs> awesome. And then we'll go to Alaska. Okay. Perfect. No guarantees just yet. <laughs> Eva, what keeps you motivated each day as you wake up to continue driving forward with the energy and the spice that you do? Mm, gosh, I... <sighs> Honestly, I mean, it's it's a balance of feeling like I'm going to live forever and knowing that today could be my last, right? So it's that balance of seizing the day because it's all we have and seizing the day because we're going to get to live forever and ever. So I wake up every day feeling like it's a Monday, feeling like it's New Year's Day. Every single day, I, I just try and do what I love. I try and seek inspiration in my life, even in the things that aren't necessarily quite as exciting. Um, but really, I feel like I'm just driven from a love of life and a passion for each new fresh day. You know, I we're, we're just all so blessed to have an amazing life and it's our responsibility to lean into that as much as possible so i think that's it in a nutshell what if anything has restored your faith in humanity in all the adventures you've done well lisa i've never lost faith in humanity i think the more time i spend with people the more i know that human beings are inherently good and wonderful and the more you travel, the more you know this, that like people generally have your best interests. And I love people. I'm a people person. That's the long and short of it. I love everybody. And the more I travel, whether I'm in Arizona or South America or Africa, I people, humans are inherently amazing. And I love getting to know each and every person that I've crossed paths with. That's amazing. I love that. And what advice would you give your 10 year younger self? Oh, get excited, girl. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Yeah, totally. 10 years ago, I man, I I just had no idea that 
I mean, my life has always been really good, but I just had no idea that it was, I don't know. I just feel like my life is so wonderful. I feel so lucky to, to live the life that I do and just keep rocking and keep on, keep on living the good life because it's, it's really fun and it just keeps getting better. If you could put any message on every billboard in America, what would it be? Coffee dogs and motorcycles. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's, That's awesome. it. That's the secret to happiness. <laughs> That's cool. All right, Eva, anything that we've missed? Gosh, I I don't think so. I am really excited to see you guys and everybody who's listening at an Overland Expo this year. It's going to be really fun. And with four shows, I guarantee there's one that's not too far from home. So um, when you guys are all there, make sure you come up and say hey to us and introduce yourselves because we're, we're here for you. That's why we produce Overland Expo, because we love our community. So come say hey and look forward to seeing you all around the campfire at an event this season. Eva, could you remind us um, locations and when each one are, is happening? Sure. Let me just give you the rundown because the season for Overland Expo in 2022 is going back to normal. This past year was a little haywire because we were still sort of in the throes of some COVID stuff for the first half of the year, but everything's back to normal for 2022. Um, the West event kicks it off in May, May 20th through 22nd in Flagstaff, Arizona. And then July 8th through 10th, we're at the Pacific Northwest, just north of Bend in Oregon. August 26th through the 28th, we are in Loveland, Colorado for Mountain West. And then we wrap up the season October 7th through 9th in Arrington, Virginia with the East Show. Excellent. We could go to three of those and then head to Alaska. <laughs> I Apparently like we're going to see you more than that, once, Eva. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Well, I can't wait to meet you guys in person and, you know, let your audience know you can find out all the information you need at overlandexpo.com or on our Instagram, which is at Overland Expo. And we've got a great editorial thing going on. Lots of great content constantly being created on overlandexpo.com slash the compass. So everything from gear reviews to trips and trails to insight and insider information about overlanding is all on there as well. So just for some, some pre event learning, the compass is the place for that. And yeah. And you can find me mostly on Instagram. My Instagram handle is my name, Eva Rupert. So pop over and say, Hey, that's super cool. Okay. Let's wrap it up with a few fun facts about you. What is a favorite meal on the road that you make yourself? Ooh, um, I would say um, pad thai is a go-to for me. And a favorite genre of music? Ooh, I'm a big blues fan, I would say. Nice. Mm. Favorite drink in the morning to get you going? Coffee, coffee, oh, and coffee. more coffee. <laughs> yes, <amen. laughs> Any specific mixture or just dark coffee? Um, well, I tend to like light roasts because they're more highly caffeinated. So it really gets <laughs> me jazzed go. in the morning. But one of my faves is Bivouac Coffee out of Colorado. They make some amazing beans. Ooh. Nice. Perfect. And a favorite beverage at night to wind down after a long day on the road? Mm, you know, it depends on the day, but a crisp cold lager or a nice robust bourbon around the campfire. And what's your best advice to aspiring overlanders and adventure enthusiasts listening right now? Oh, you have everything you need to hit the road. Don't worry about the gear. Don't worry about the sparkles. Don't get stalled out in your driveway for way too long. Hit the road and just go do it. Go out and explore. There is no shame in being a weekend warrior. If you have two days, go for two days. If you have two months, take the two months, but just do it. They love it. Any more information you'd like to give or useful resources our listeners should check out? Gosh, I already plugged the compass on Overland Expo, and that's just a phenomenal resource for learning about the industry and learning about the space and all the cool stuff that you need for, for overlanding. Um, gosh, any other great resources? You know, there are some really phenomenal books. Um Jonathan Hansen has one of the definitive guides to vehicle travel, and that's a great book and a great resource to have. 
um, Sam Manicom and Ted Simon write some really inspiring travel books. And so there's a lot of great print publications out there to get you excited and get you going too. And you don't need internet access to read those as you're going. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can take those with you wherever you go. All right, cool. So you mentioned your Instagram. Any other good ways of connecting with you, Eva? Um, my website is evarupert.com and that has, you know, a contact form in case you have a specific question and you want to email me. Apparently I'm going to get back to blogging because I wrote that really nice <laughs> passage <laughs> you read earlier, Lisa. Um but yeah, I'm pretty easy to find. I'm typically popping up on the Overland Expo pages, having great conversations with folks like you guys. And um, yeah, yeah, I'm not hard to hunt down in the social media space or come down to Bisbee, Arizona and book a room at the John Quill Motel and we'll tell you all of our favorite trails and roads to go exploring. Perfect. Nice. Yes. Eva, thank you so much for your time. We do really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today. It's been inspiring and a lot of fun. So we appreciate your energy and we look forward to meeting you probably at Overland Expo just north of Bend. One, two, and I love three. it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I can't wait to meet you guys in person. And Lisa and Chris, it's been a real pleasure talking with you. Thank awesome. You. Thank you, Eva. Take care. Yes. Have a great day. Bye.